So now let's jump into the cost breakdown for this unit. After a quick review of the parts and what was needed to get the printer up and running, here's the breakdown. As you can see, the parts came out to just under $100 US, which is just over $120 Canadian. There are a few spots where we can save some money on it, however. I used 1x4 project wood. This was a bit more expensive than the original MDF, so you could opt to use MDF here, or you could even use some scrap wood recovered from somewhere for even more savings. You also don't need to paint it. I chose to do that because I thought the black on orange would look good, and for the cost of $1.50 for a can of spray paint, it seemed like a no-brainer for me. I built mine using an all-aluminum extruder. I found a design for an extruder that would use two of the 28BYJ motors instead. This would add several printed parts, as well as a couple of screws and a couple of springs, but it would end up saving you the cost of a NEMA 17 motor as well as the cost of the extruder, working out to savings in roughly around the $10 range. The V6 clone hot end that I used could be swapped out for a V5 clone. These can be had for a few dollars cheaper and would likely deliver similar print quality in this application, but at the cost of some of your Z height. Finally, the end stops I used were mounted on circuit boards and were easier to use. You can get away with a cheaper solution and save yourself about $1.50 there.